Kathy Flipping Glass. I have been meaning to make this video since May. I emailed Kathy Glass in May and she responded the very next day. So we'll get into that. I can show you screenshots. I will also add, I think I got stung on the lip by a bee. This side of my lip is really swollen. And I will also quickly say, I'm not singling out the person who left this comment. I've had a few people ask me about Kathy Glass. The girl who commented this seems really sweet. I just picked out her comment because it was the most recent one. Even though I'm not a fan of Kathy Glass, I'm not against anyone who is a fan. I can see the appeal of her books. So let's go into it. I should probably have made this in some sort of order, but I'm literally going off the top of my head. Kathy Glass is a foster carer who writes about her experiences of being a foster carer. I am not against foster carers writing books. I think it's important foster carers write books. I think there's a right way to do it, a smart way to do it. And then there's the Kathy Glass way, <laughs> mate. <laughs> This is purely my opinion. It's coming from someone who was in foster care and also works in a social services department. I am all for reading books that are misery corn, trauma corn. I'm all for it. And I have read some of Kathy Glass's books. So, But when I read a book about someone's trauma, I want to read about it from the person who experienced the trauma. And Kathy Glass goes in depth. Obviously she has changed names and locations, but Kathy Glass is adamant on her website and doing my research that all her stories are true. It's not loads of different children combined. I think if you're a foster carer writing a book, you should merge multiple children together so that that child never figures out who they are. Because one, I know damn well, Kathy Glass did not ask permission from these children. We'll go into that. But also, can you imagine? I can't imagine. Okay, so where I work in social services, obviously confidentiality means that I cannot talk about the cases that I see. Why are the rules different for Kathy? She's a foster carer, but she still works within the system. Let's say me working in social services, or even if I stopped working in the social services department. Can you imagine me telling a story about one of my cases? And it would be very easy to tell stories. I have seen some stories and a half. If I told stories about some of the cases I heard, the amount of views and likes I could get off that. But the reason I don't do that is one, it feels like exploitation, using another child's foster care experience for clout, using another foster child's experience for money, which Kathy's doing, she doesn't pay the kids, we'll get into that. Can you imagine me telling a story about a foster child and then they come across one of my videos? You not think that would be horrible for them? If I read a Kathy Glass book and clocked that it was about me, I would expose her name. I would tell everyone her name, just put an end to it. Now in this email, I, again, I will bring up the screenshots, but Kathy Glass, based on things I said, Kathy Glass did say, well, I do ask people who are included in the book for permission when it's necessary. First of all, it's always necessary. But second of all, the good example I thought of was if you've read the book by Kathy Glass called Damaged about a girl called Jodie, Kathy Glass goes into extreme detail about what that little girl went through before she was in foster care. There's just something not right about publishing that in a book. It's not your trauma to publish. And she's made money off it. Don't forget any of this. She's making money off it. But also, if you've read that book, because I'm not going to tell you the whole plot, but basically, if you've read that book, it's very clear that the little girl Jodie is mentally a lot younger than her actual age. And that could be because of the trauma, special educational needs, she may be neurodivergent, all kinds of reasons. So when Kathy Glass says, well, I ask people for permission, it's very questionable to me about which children you've fostered that could actually consent to that and have a full understanding of what they're consenting to. I also don't buy that these kids will agree to this and they may be adults now with no payment. The book I read recently was called Please Don't Take My Baby. By the way, if you haven't already figured this out, this is just a ranty video. It's just me ranting to myself, but I make valid points. So this Please Don't Take My Baby book, I haven't read all of Kathy Glass's books, but I've read a fair amount. And I buy these books on eBay or in charity shops. I will not buy these books from a bookstore. I will not buy these books on Amazon because I refuse to put money in Kathy's pocket. And Kathy Glass is not the only author that does this. You've got Casey Watson, you've got Maggie Hartley, you've got a few others. But Kathy reminds us on her website that she was the first to do it. She broke new ground, her words. So this Please Don't Take My Baby one, it's about a pregnant teenager 
who Kathy is looking after as like a mother and baby foster placement. If you know my story, I was in one of those myself. I was in care for years, came pregnant, moved to a mother and baby foster placement. One point during this book, Kathy Glass literally describes this girl as fat. I'm paraphrasing, I don't think she uses the word fat. Kathy Glass bangs on about her children and how perfect they are. She goes on about, and I've highlighted it, I've just had a look so that I'm correct. She sort of goes on about, well, no one should have a baby as a teenager. It's better to wait until you have a husband. I was 17 when I had my child. I'm a fantastic parent. And I don't, I, I need to make a whole video about this, but I'm so glad I had a baby at 17. I'm glad I had my daughter young. When I'm 50, I'm gonna have a 33 year old. I just don't think Kathy Glass, who, you know, had three children and is now divorced, should sort of talk about what's best, what best situation to be in. Anyway. Oh, and the fat thing, I just found it. What she says, she's comparing, she's saying that the girl, who she names Jade, was a lot bigger than her boyfriend and looked like she could have eaten him for dinner. This is a pregnant person, you know they're pregnant, right? The one thing that pissed me off in that book, sorry, this is like proper bra, this is gonna have to be more than one part, I'm sorry. Again, if you know my videos, you know that I was never given my own key while in foster care, except for one foster carer. And I can sort of see why foster carers may not want to give kids keys. Whenever I went into a new foster placement and I wasn't given a key, all it did is remind me that one, I'm not part of the family, and two, for some reason they can't trust me. And then it's really hard to build a relationship with someone who doesn't trust you. Especially when this is someone who, me as a child, I'm supposed to trust them to look after me, but they don't trust me to just be in their home. Kathy Glass in this book made a big point about being like, I did give Jade a copy of the key, but I would live to regret it. So the whole rest of the book I'm reading, waiting to see what happened with her and this key. Did she burgle the place? When Kathy was away, did, did Jade hold a massive party? Nothing. Nothing happens with Jade and the key. Jade doesn't, it's one of them flipping like clickbait keep reading to find out what jade did wrong with this key it doesn't come and i know it sounds minor like i'm getting hit up over a key but like i said as someone who had five foster carers who wouldn't give her a key it's really horrible i'm gonna read loads of kathy glass books and just highlight the crazy things she said because i still can't get over that she looks like she could have eaten her boyfriend for dinner or saying she's fat kathy doesn't use the word fat she uses the word overweight eating him for dinner like why why would you say that why would you actually anyway so i'm gonna do that i want to make a whole series just highlighting the terrible things she says but one thing kathy does kathy likes to remind us how brilliant she is and she will either do this by outright telling us or getting other people to tell us through dialogue so her social worker for example her social worker is ringing kathy just to say you're brilliant kathy no one does it like you kathy if anyone can do this job it's you kathy you're the best kathy it feels like every other page i feel like kathy glass has a massive savior complex like one of those people who foster just so they can be told how brilliant they are, how wonderful they are helping these kids. These poor kids, no one can look after them like you, Kathy. Why is she trying to convince us? You Do you believe in yourself? Is that why you've got to convince other people? Every couple of pages, she psychoanalyzes the child. And some of Kathy's observations, so wrong, so wrong. I feel like every other page, Kathy is making a casserole or a shepherd's pie. She talks a lot about how brilliant her children are, how she doesn't want them to be influenced by the foster children. But one of her children literally called Jodie, one who had been essayed her whole life by her own parents, called her bonkers, called her crazy, called her off her trolley. And I'm not having a go at Kathy Glass's child for that because she's a child at the end of the day. But Kathy, your kids aren't perfect either. She mentions a lot about her ex-husband. I don't know why he's mentioned. I feel like he's only mentioned because Kathy's hoping he'll read it. I know this rant has turned personal, but seriously, as a, as a, oh. If I found out a foster carer is making money of my trauma, I'd lose it. You have no business doing that. Foster carers should write books, but there is a way to do it. And I would say the way to do it, combine multiple children. And maybe Kathy does that, but Kathy doesn't state that. And since she doesn't state that and she makes it out that they're all about one individual child, you're either doing something wrong by doing that, something very exploitative, or you're lying. You have combined multiple children together. And if you are gonna make money off these kids, I want those kids to get 50%, 50. Not 10, not 
50. Anyway, I'm going to just put up the screenshots now because I feel like this is dragging on. Listen, I may come across, you're going to read this email. I might come across a bit harsh, but it had been bugging me for ages. I also made a mistake, which I will hold my hands up to. So Kathy Glass, as well as writing her foster care books, she also writes these mystery crime thriller ones. I've never read them. The name she uses is Lisa Stone. And there was nothing that showed that that name was a pseudium. Is that how you pronounce the word? A fake name. So I was under the impression that Lisa Stone was her real name and she'd come out and told everyone her real name. But then I'm thinking, you're a foster carer, you're supposed to use fake names. Anyway, so, my bad. So at the top there, I don't think you can see it, but I say, hi Lisa. <laughs> That's not her real name, I was wrong. Hi Lisa, aka Kathy. I'm a former foster child and I'd like to know <laughs> how you get away with making money by writing about the children you formerly fostered. I, w I did not care. Is this not exploitation? <laughs> Is this not exploitation? Do they get a penny of what you have earned telling the world about their trauma? If I picked up your book and, and saw my story written on paper, I would be horrified and disgusted. Changing my name wouldn't make a difference to my feelings. I work in a social services department. It's likely I can type your name into my system and see who you are and the names of all the children you've fostered. My bad. That's not accurate. Do you think coming out with... <laughs> Do you think coming out with your real name was a good idea or a massive safeguarding issue? Claim all your stories to be true. However, I really hope you've combined several children into one or outright lied about their experiences because to reveal their lives in the way you have is purely horrible. <laughs> purely horrible. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, I sent this at like two in the morning. I didn't care. Oh God, here we go. There are many types of foster carers. Some include people who foster for money and then there are some people who foster so they can tell everyone that they do it and how great they are. Why don't I just shrink my face? Why do I like move my head so much? Da 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 and how great they are. Like you often try to remind the reader every 10 pages or so. I doubt I'll get a reply, but I really hope you do respond. The most important thing I want to know if you got permission from every child you've written about. This is Kathy's response. Dear Slaney, thank you for your email. Lisa Stone is not my real name. It states sodium in my books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was wrong. In respect of confidentiality, all names and places are changed so the child can't be identified and permission is sought where necessary. And that was it. That was my response. Listen, credit to Kathy. I didn't think she would reply at all. I thought she would read my message and think, this girl and then not reply. So credit to Kathy for replying. Permission where necessary. I don't believe she's asked permission from every single foster child on her website. And I've read interviews with her and other people. She even says some of them she hasn't been in touch with for years. So I can't imagine she hasn't spoke to a foster child in like 10 years and then just randomly popped up to ask permission for them to be in a book. If she is asking permission, I don't think it's coming from her. It's probably coming from like the publishing house or the agency, in which case you're an because you should be the one asking permission not getting third parties to do it i don't think permission's been sought i don't care if you've changed names and locations because it's kind of like what i do you know i tell story time and i change people's names the people i'm talking about are probably still p about it even though i've used a fake name even though none of you know who i'm talking about if they come across it they're probably annoyed so could you imagine if they're annoyed at that, how annoyed they'd be if I went through their whole childhood. Rather than, like Kathy's wrote 300 pages on a child, if I made 300 videos on one person, it'd be a little bit questionable. I'm trying to write a foster care memoir about my experiences. And obviously I mention foster carers in my book, but I don't dedicate a whole book to one foster carer. Because when I write about trauma, it's going to be about my own. I have no right to write about someone else's trauma and then exploit that and make money off it. And this is how I know Kathy Glass doesn't pay those kids because I mentioned that in my email about I hope you pay the children. If she was paying the children, she would have no problem saying that. Because me, if I did what she did and someone accused me of not paying the children when I am, I would want everyone to know that. I would correct that person so quick, like, no, 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 I do give a percentage of that money to the kids. But she doesn't. I have nothing against people who read Kathy Glass books and enjoy them. I've got nothing against it. And I said before, Kathy Glass is not the only person that does it. She's not. There are other foster carers in the UK that do it. But I think it needs to stop. And if it continues, it's got to be done differently. You don't get to exploit children's trauma for your career and for money. We're not doing that anymore. We're not doing it.